And without further ado, let's go to Las Vegas right now and say hello to the pride of New Zealand, Mr. Kai Kara France, who's joining us. Kai, how are you, my friend? Hey, bro. Yeah, I'm really good. How you been? I've been great. It's great to talk to you. What a huge fight. This is one of the most interesting fights on this card. I appreciate you joining us. I know it's a busy day over there in Las Vegas for you and everyone. Uh, we were just talking about you before you came on, and I don't know if you pay attention to this stuff, but are you surprised that you're the betting underdog going into this fight, considering Cody has never fought at 125? He has never made 125. Um, you know, I'm not surprised at all, but um, it's all all the pressure's on him. This is his first time doing it, first time cutting the flyweight. He doesn't know how he's going to react. He doesn't know how his body's going to recover from the weight cut. And, um, you know, I've done this. This will be my eighth UFC fight. You know, I've done um, done the cut the flow weight many times before. I've got the best nutritionist in the world, Geordie, the fight dietitian. So, um, he knows my body's better than I do. So, we're I'm, I'm pretty close to weight now. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to get in there. It's been such a um, process just to get to Vegas. Um, so, yeah, now it's now it's time to make a statement on such such a stack card last paper for the year. Um, what better way to take out a former champ and, and um, put him on my resume? Uh, so some photos of him have emerged. Um, we actually have one of the photos here. Have you seen how he looks? And this is well before the actual weigh-in on Friday. And if so, what were your thoughts when you saw his physique? Um, you know, I don't really take into too much consideration. You know, people, you're going to be depleted and trains and, and, um, it's not really gonna give it, uh, justify how you're feeling in the weight cut, um, just cause you've got a gaunt face or, or sunken in face. Um, but I, I heard he doesn't cut too much to, to get to bantamweight. So, um, and saying that it shouldn't be too hard of a cut for him to get to flyweight, but it'll be his first time doing it. And, and you'll have me standing in this being right in front of his face, trying to take his head off. So, um, that's what is make, making it for an intriguing, intriguing matchup. People just don't know. And uh, I guess I'll be answering those questions come uh, Saturday night. So, um, you know, I want the best Cody. I want him to, to bring the, um, the best version of himself. And uh, he's trying to reinvent himself in this new weight class. I guess he's, um, you know, tr thinking he can come down to flow and try bully the, the smaller fighters. But, um, you know, he's going to realize that speed kills at this weight class. And um, that's what I'm planning on doing. Uh, any concern on your part that he doesn't make weight? No, no, no. I feel like he'll make it pretty easy. Um, but then in saying that, you know, he, he's got to recover and, and all of that. So um, I don't I don't feel like he will. But if he does, if he does miss weight, then, um, you know, I get a percentage. I'll still be taking the fight. I know what's on the line. This is a title fight eliminator. People um, people can say, you know, there's the top five and, and um, I'm the welcoming fight. But, um you know, they're not fighting this. They're not fighting the former champion. I am, you know, when it came across my table, I had a fight lined up with someone else, but, uh, I, I said, you know, I'd rather take the bigger challenge and, uh, welcome, you know, a former champion in the, the division. So the UFC, you know, I see that, see us both being exciting, both like to come forward aggressive, you know, both go for knockouts. Um, I know I finally lived up to my nickname in my, in my last fight, but, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I see this as a title fight eliminator and I can see myself fighting for the title next year against Brandon Moreno, get the rematch against him. You know, we had a close fight in, in our last outing in 2019 when we last fought. You know, I dropped him twice in the first round and, and um, he ended up adapting well and, and getting a, um, a close decision. But he's a lot better since then. I'm a lot better since then. Not looking past Cody at all, but I'm just uh, predicting the future here. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, I've heard people sort of hypothesize that if Cody wins, shoe in to get a title shot. Have you been told that if you win this fight, you are going to fight for the belt next? Or maybe your management? Has anyone told you guys this? Um, yeah, I've, I've spoken to Ash. He he said he spoke to Mick. Um, you know, Mick's really good at choosing his words. So <laughs> uh, he said, uh, we'll see. So uh, I know they'll give Cody the title shot. So I'll have a chat with Dana. And um, once I put him away, um, you know, I, I want that. I want the rematch. I want the title shot. If anyone gets injured in that in their fight in uh, January, you know, I'd love to step in. So, obviously, not looking past Cody at all. That that's all I've been focusing on. Um, that's all. Be, that's the only thing that's been on my mind is, um, you know, December eleventh. So, um, you know, I'm in the best shape of my career. Um, I knew what was in stakes um, stepping in for this fight. So, um, I can't wait to to show everyone and and um, you know steal the spotlight. There's so many. Um, 
big fights on this card, so I, I want to separate myself. I want I want to put a make a statement and uh, put it on put the heat on this guy. Uh, the last time we saw a move down to one twenty five, you know, as uh, big as this one, of course, was his former teammate and friend uh, T.J. Dillashaw moving down from one thirty five to one twenty five. We know what happened there. He was uh, you know disposed of in less than a minute. Do you yeah. feel like this is a massive mistake on his part? He's coming off a loss. He's trying to reinvent the career. Do you feel like, regard if you could take yourself out of the equation, do you think Cody Garbrandt moving down to 125 is a mistake? Um, you know, when you get desperate, you, you, you're you running out of options. And, and sometimes the last result is to go down. Mm. Um, you know, he, he's always been in exciting fights, even though he was coming off second best. You know, he always put on exciting fights. And I know he's going to be dangerous. You know, he's been in, been in there with the best and, and he was the fastest at Bantamweight. He's got, you know, probably one of the best boxings in, in the UFC. Um, so it'd be naive for me to just think, oh yeah, he's not going to be as durable. I can just walk through him. No, it's, it's going to be a tough fight. And I know that, but uh, I made sure that, you know, I'm, I'm coming in fit and I'm going to use it as a weapon. I want to put the pressure on him, make him feel the weight cut, make him feel that, um, you know, he, it was a wrong decision to come down to flyweights. Um, look what I have to TJ and, um, yeah, it just, it, it doesn't always work out, but, um, that's the beauty about the fight game. We get to find out in the next few days. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've ticked all the boxes this camp. I've, I've gone over everything, you know, the best team in the world, City Kickboxing with our head coach, Eugene, uh, we've gone over all of the, um, tendencies and stuff that he will do. There's only so much you can do in a few months to kind of reinvent, reinvent yourself and, and change your style. You know, once, once you get hurt, Cody's always going to go back to his default, which is just swing. And, um, just get reckless, but that, that makes it for a fan favorite fight. That's what I love. I, I want to be tested. I, I want to get, um, be in that, in the fire, in the line of fire, because when I, when I, uh, put them out, uh, there's just no excuses. So, uh, that's what I can't wait. And, uh, being in front of a crowd again, my last fight in front of a crowd was in my hometown in Auckland. Wow. Dan Hooker fought, uh, Paul Fowler. This yeah. was back in 2020. So, uh, you know, I haven't had that, that feeling and, and so long being in the, in those apexes and, um, and in Fight Island, it doesn't do the fights justice. You know, it's, right. it's different. So um, when I walk out to T-Mobile, hear my walk-up music, it, it's, it's a party. And back home in New Zealand, everyone's going to be um, tuning in. The whole whole country's going to stop and tune in, and I'm going to do them proud. Um, will Eugene be in your corner? Uh, no, Eugene won't be in my corner. Dan, Dan um, will be... Um, be in my corner, Dan Hooker. He's been based out in Vegas for yep. a while now, so he'll he'll be here as well as obviously Frank and and um, a few of the other boys. So um, unfortunately, he won't be in my corner. But you know, we're, we've been going over the game plan, and and I know what I have to do. So once I get once I get in there, you know, my my experience in this fight game will will, will let me do what I need to do, and and um, yeah, will be sweet. Uh, just curious, when was the last time he wasn't in your corner, Eugene? Yeah. Um, I can't really remember, but wow. you know, Dan's been in my, I've, I've started training with Dan when I was about 15 years old. Okay. Um, so when I was living in Asia, training out of Thailand, um, you know, Dan cornered me maybe 20 times. Um, you know, so he, he knows me, um, just as, as, as well as Eugene. And, you know, that's the thing about our, our gym. We know the system, we know what we have to do. Um, so yeah, we'll be more than prepared. Uh, we've heard obviously Dan's issues with training at home and the visa stuff and all that. Um, for yourself, yeah. how difficult was it to train for this fight? Uh, yeah, it, it was very difficult. Um, restrictions in New Zealand, especially in Auckland where I live, were um, yeah, it was was hard to work around. But I managed to, I guess, get in um, you know training partners that uh, were part of my bubble. And um, I, I'm very happy with the camp that we put together. You know, I brought in guys that, um, you know, elite wrestlers and, and um, you know, New Zealand kickboxing champions, um, just to give me that look that I need um, that that Cody will bring. Um, so that's what I mean, that we've ticked all the boxes and we've gone to places in this camp that um, that uh, I've just had to make home, you know, those dark places where you, where you push right to the um, right to the edge. Um, you gotta, you got to know you're the champion before you become the champion. That, and that's what we've done in this camp. We've just really pushed, um, pushed the cardio, pushed, pushed um, every facet of the game and um, brought in, you know, all these coaches for, for um, you know, breathing, um, sports psychologists, um, strength coaches. My nutritionist is here with me now. So, 
it's a collective input and and um, I'm just you know the body of work and, and now I get to go out there and have fun the hard part's over um, getting through that and and my family's actually with me I, I brought my family over to Vegas oh wow um, I didn't want to be apart from them over yeah. Christmas and New Year's because of New Zealand you have to book a MIQ room to quarantine but lucky enough I do have one mid Jan so I do I can go back home but uh I w- I just committed I said uh I wanted to bring my family with me. So my nine month old son and my wife are here in Vegas staying at Dan's house and I'm in the fighters hotel. So, you know, fo- focused and, and business as usual, but um, it's just nice that I, I won't be waiting months at a time to go see them again. Wow. God bless that nine month old uh, son of yours. And by the way, uh, congratulations on becoming a dad, making that flight from New Zealand to Las Vegas. Yeah. Holy smokes. I'm sure that was a thrill. No, that was, that was the fight before the fight, but my yeah. son did really well. He, I'm proud of him. He slept for like nine hours out of the 12. And then the rest of the time was me running up the aisle, chasing him. And he was crawling, looking behind and laughing. And then he'll keep crawling. So now he did really well. It, like he, he's, he's a breeze to travel off. So pretty, That's pretty great. lucky. Um, but yeah, it, it's, um, it's a, it's a new journey for us, you know, all traveling together for fights. Um, but w- once I got to, to the Vegas, you know, our whole team, our whole team was already here for, for Brad's fight um, from city kickboxing. So it's just, it's all the same. Um, you mentioned, I was going to ask you about the breathing um, specialist and the sports psychologist that you've been working with. Is this the first camp that you work with people like that, or have you been doing that for quite some time? Uh, no, we've been doing it for a while now. You know, he works with most of the team at City Kickboxing. Um, David Neath is our sports psychologist, and David Wood is our um, breathing coach. And um, it's just evolving with the sport. You know, there's so many things you have to, um, you have to, uh, focus on and worry about and and one thing you can control is uh i guess regulating your, your breathing and, and staying calm under pressure and integrating that into um combat training um and i, I feel like it's def- definitely giving us an edge without giving out giving away too many secrets but it's it's um yeah i've been a massive help for me um just just uh focusing on on that side of this on that side of the sport especially in these high profile fights high pressure moments um, it's all about who can stay the most calm and who can stay the most um, present in the time. And then uh, working with a sports psychologist, also you know tapping into that one percent, one percent better. You know um, something so small can um, can change everything. You know the way you talk to yourself, the way you deal with doubt, um, doubt and stress, and and um, fight week. You know is such a crucial part where you have to you know just manage everything and and. Um, We've got a good system that that we follow uh, that we follow at City Kickboxing and and um, you know I'm I'm so happy with the coaches we bring in and and that's, that's their spe- specialty is to help us uh, perform at our best so uh, I'm very happy with this camp and I'm very happy where I am um, physically emotionally mentally and uh, now I get to take out a former champ so um, yeah it's it's going to be a fun fight a fan favorite fight you know a lot of big fights on this card um, but this is the one to watch out for. By the way, you mentioned your son, uh, nine months old. Your last fight was nine months ago. Was he born when you fought on March sixth? Yeah. yeah, he was born two weeks before I left. Wow. So when I um, fought last, yeah, he was two weeks old. Um, but you know, Dad's got to go do, um, go to work and, and put food on the table. So it's as a small sacrifice. But now, you know, having that time to actually um, be home and and, and um, be around him and be around my partner, it's been such a blessing to be able to. Um, have have that side of things, I guess, um, where you're not rushed to get back into a camp and all that. So I did want to fight earlier, but uh, it's just the way I guess this the world works at the moment. We had to wait our time, and it, and it kind of all worked out. You know, I got a bigger matchup, I got a, a bigger bigger fight, and uh, now this is a title fight eliminator. So um, I, I, that's 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 what um, keep me motivated is knowing that you know I'm fighting the best in the world and. Um, and now I get to set myself up for 2022. I feel like since you became a dad, you got that power back in your hands. Knockout first time you're fighting as a dad. <laughs> Second one, you knock out Cody yeah. Garbrandt. There'll be no denying that you're next for the belt. Something changes when you become a father, right? You get that dad strength. Exactly, dad strength all the way. You know, I've got so many good role models around me. You know, Dan's a great father. Brad's a father. I have a great father, and Eugene. You know, he's got um, a few kids as well. So great, great um, mentors around me to kind of feed off ask for advice, um, babysit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're good to go. Uh, by the way, uh, the state of the gym and the training, uh, you, you think you guys are going to have to leave? What's the latest? No, no, no. So in New Zealand at the moment, 
uh, we're pretty much at 90% vaccinated uh, oh. throughout the whole country. So that was the um, that was the strategy for our government, and now everything's back open again. So oh. um, they're, they're mandating vaccines. So you just have to have a vaccine passport, and you can do anything really. Okay. Um, so our gym's back open. When I left, um, we were, we are open. So um, it's good to have a bit of normality, um, but. At the at the moment, you know, I, I just had to work around everything and adapt and, and uh, control what I and control what I could. So uh, getting on that flight, it was just like I've already gone through so much. Now I just get to, um, you know, do what I need to do and, and um, stress free now. So uh, we're at a great place. Yeah, and hopefully that MIQ thing that goes away soon for you guys as well. So yeah, so it's on. actually finishing um, end of February. So oh wow, after February there won't be any more MIQ for New Zealand. Um, and in April, um, from what they've been saying, is it's going to open up to international. So let's uh, let's get a UFC down in, in New oh Zealand. You'll be able to do it after April. So it's about time. You know, we, we, we haven't had any events down in Australia or New Zealand in the last two years. So we'd love to bring them back. Oh, how about uh, they hold off on Izzy versus Whitaker, and then you win on Saturday. We do Izzy Whitaker for the middleweight title. We do... Kai Car France against either Moreno or Figueredo, whoever wins on January 22nd. Yeah. I know you would like the Moreno fight for the belt on the same card in New Zealand. Let's go. Why not? And then we'll just chuck in Alex and Max Holloway for the third for the <laughs> yeah, trilogy. Exactly. Why not? Yeah, that would be great. Um, and I know that you guys love to be on the same card together. You're flying solo this week. It's all about you, right? Yeah, the, for, the, for, the, for this time um, from City Kickboxing, yeah. it's just me. Um, but you know, I'm I'm great, um, close with Tai Tuivasa. You know, he's one of my t- uh, good friends from Australia. Um, you know, one of my Polynesian brothers. So uh, I know he, he'll he get he got in last night. So we'll catch up. And um, you know, when me and him are on the same card, it's always a party. So um, I can't wait. You don't do shoeies though, right? I don't do shoeies. Yeah, no, I just no. leave that time. Yeah. I, I just I let him do his thing. You know, that's that's his thing. Um, You're a little more yeah, civilized than that. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, it's just his thing, you know. It's, I, know, I don't want to get. I don't want to spit on a shoe and the drink spit. it. Spit. You know? I mean, the spit. The shoe is gross <laughs> enough. Adding the spit to it is just a whole other level of gross. Especially in the pandemic, right? Oh like, my gosh! You're trying to get. You trying to get COVID? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I can't wait for this fight, man. I really am excited about it. Uh, I love the fact that they have you listed as the underdog. I think that's super interesting as well. Massive opportunity for you. Can't wait to see how he looks in there. Can't wait to see the matchup play out. Well done on uh, getting to this point. You appear to be in great shape, and I wish you nothing but the best on Saturday. And thanks for doing this. Again, I know Wednesdays are very packed and busy over there in Vegas for you guys, so really appreciate you coming on for a few minutes. Anytime, bro. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, can't wait to get in there and um, don't blink, baby. All right, can't wait. There he is, Kai Car France, joining us. Huge fight for him on Saturday at UFC 269. What an opportunity against the former bantamweight champ, one of the... Uh, best champs in recent memory. 